So let's get to some uh, convention stuff, some highlights. And uh, we'll kick it off with hopefully the uh, incoming governor of North Carolina, the current lieutenant governor of North Carolina, that just mammoth man, <laughs> that amazing beast of a man, Mark Robinson. I'm Mark Robinson. I am the first black lieutenant governor of North Carolina. And come November, I plan on being the first black governor of North Carolina. I am not one of the political elite. I grew up poor as the ninth of 10 kids in Greensboro with an alcoholic father who beat my mother. I'd love to tell you that I graduated from high school, found success, never worried about money again, but I can't. I lost two jobs, two manufacturing jobs because of NAFTA, which by the way, Joe Biden voted for. Politicians in D.C. made bad decisions. People like me suffered. I lost my car and my house. I was desperate. But you know, my story isn't unique. A couple of months ago in my travels, I stopped at a gas station. As I was leaving, a man walked out with a beard and he looked very stressed. He got in his car and I could see him holding an envelope. My heart dropped because years ago, I held one just like it. It was bankruptcy papers. I could see the fear on his face. And it took me back to lying awake at night with that gnawing worrying, debating which bills weren't going to get paid. Unfortunately, many families today are having that same experience. Under Joe Biden, grocery prices have skyrocketed and gas has nearly doubled. In North Carolina, factories just like the one I worked at are closing, leaving families feeling hopeless. But there is hope and I'm proof. My wife and I never gave up. We kept our faith. We worked hard and made it through those tough times. Now I stand before you on the verge of becoming the first black governor of North Carolina. I love it. That is As governor, dope. I will not love forget him. where I came from or the struggles of the people I meet. And you know, there's someone else who will fight just as hard for you. President Donald J. Trump. That's right. I love that guy. I love yeah. him. I, I'm excited that Jackson will get to vote for him. Yes. Oh my gosh. Which yes. I'm super stoked about. Yeah. That really, is really fantastic. About that. Yeah, he's great. So many great speeches last night. There really were. I mean, it was hard mm -hmm. to even figure out like what clips to cut for today's show because right. you know we can't just play them all and in their entirety because we would that would take all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and one a, a perfect example of that is Vivek. He did a phenomenal job. You should absolutely go seek out the whole thing if you haven't seen it. But I clipped just uh, one specific part of it because it spurred a fight with AOC that I wanted to show you. So here is a little bit of Vivek's amazing speech last night. And our message to Gen Z is this. You're going to be the generation that actually saves this country. You want to be a rebel? You want to be a hippie? You want to stick it to the man? <laughs> Show up on your college campus and try calling yourself a conservative. Exactly. <laughs> Say you want to get married, have kids, teach them to believe in God and pledge allegiance to their country. Because you know what? Fear has been infectious in this country, but courage can be contagious too. That too that. is what it means to be an American. That's right. He's so good. He is. He is so good. God, I hope he has a spot in this administration. I really, really do. Because I just I love mean, him. Yeah. Yeah. He's such a firecracker. And he's man. so right about that. And we've been talking about that for years too. We are the hippies now. We're the counterculture. And yeah. every college kid that writes us and they said, you know, we, I listen to your show or whatever. I love what you talk about. It's so hard for me to be a conservative on campus. And we always tell them, do not be afraid. That's what they want. Don't bend. Don't be afraid. And so I love that message. And I hope there's going to be more and more kids who are just they feel emboldened to get out there and be like, screw you. I'm not afraid to be conservative because there mm. have been so many people, so many young people and so many people in general that have been afraid to be conservative. And I hope people are feeling emboldened now to be like, you know, I'm going to wear that red hat and y'all can suck it. <laughs> 
Actually, I'm glad you said that because we will have a video later of somebody doing exactly that. Um, so I think it's definitely, that's definitely a thing. It's definitely Good. happening, Good. not just with young people, but with people, people like with yeah. everybody, you mm -hmm. know, but that message to Gen Z did not sit well with AOC. And so she tweeted at the vague and said this young people don't take well to bigoted leaders who attack oh, LGBTQ up. plus rights, outlaw abortion, cozy up to gun manufacturers and oil execs and support a rapist for president. Whatever. If you want to be cool so badly, try giving a damn about other people beyond yourself might open a few doors. Where's the bigotry AOC? Where is it? I mean, we have a really diverse organization that is the RNC. Where is it? Where's the bigotry? I'd like to see it. Everybody's welcome. Yeah, I would love to see that as well. And he's on that stage, by the way, as a brown person. Yeah. I don't know if she noticed that. So yeah. he responded to her uh, on Twitter and said the following. Here's a reality check, AOC. The GOP platform does not oppose gay marriage, does not support a federal abortion ban. Stop misleading your followers and admit the real reason you're freaking out is that we're picking off your voters. Yep. Have a real debate on the merits instead of lies. Give it a try. It'll be good for your party and good for our country. That's damn straight. <laughs> Gosh, she is freaking out. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're all, all about the out. they're all about the color of your skin. Well, check out the colors. We're we're like a party of many colors. I mean, mm -hmm. look at our top look at our top candidates, our president and our vice presidential candidate. Look at their wives. Just look mm. at them. Yeah. Who you got running? <laughs> a lot of white people. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I mean, sir, if you look at the, if you just look at the top people that are running and who they got as spouses, there you go. I mean, there's that. Mm hmm. Even Kamala um, married a white dude. <laughs> I don't know why Ron DeSantis didn't have this during his campaign, but I love that that is what his initials stand for is or not his initials, but his name. Restore, Restore our, our nation. nation. That's God, a great his, logo. His speech was fire last night. It really was. And I do have a couple clips from it. I mean, I think it was about eight minutes. And so I don't even have a minute of it, but I wanted to at least share kind of his fire. Um, and so here's him coming out on the stage and the way that he kicked off the speech. My fellow Republican, let's send Joe Biden back to his basement and let's send Donald Trump back to the White House. So that was the opening, man. I mean, he was he was just like out there like immediately. Yeah. Right. He, and he then packed, he packed a lot into like seven minutes. He really did. Oh, my goodness. And, and then there was the line that actually, as Donald Trump was listening to it, he cracked up at, which I thought was super cute. You'll see that in this part. Father, I am alarmed that the current president of the United States lacks the capability to discharge the duties of his office. Our enemies do not confine their designs to between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. We need, we need a commander in chief who can lead 24 hours a day and seven days a week. America cannot afford four more years of a weekend at Bernie's presidency. <laughs> I, saw I know. I love that too. He thought that was funny. <laughs> that I just, was and, just awesome. and, and the unity was really refreshing, you know, mm. and we, and did we not, we have talked about that too, where it's like the primaries are knocked down, drag out, right? And then when they're over, they're over, y'all. Everybody mm -hmm. comes together and it's like, here we are supporting one another. It's like, the, he's our guy and everybody's all in for our guy. And DeSantis, class freaking act that guy yeah. is, right? Yeah. What a speech that was. It was, I mean, seriously, I thought it was the best one of the night. Next to, I mean, Vivek's was really, really good, but DeSantis, just fire. Yeah, really, really, really good. Renee Stella Bauer, thank you. She says, my daughter and her friends are at IU and are proud and loud supporters of Trump. And yeah, that's a they find lots of people like them. Yeah, that's a tough place to be a conservative, too. So mm -hmm. props to them. Yeah. And let's hope they stay conservative through their college indoctrination mm -hmm. experience. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> um, ben Carson. Also, uh, he's you know, he's so gentle. He's so 
quiet. He like so reserved, but he was him. great. And I, so the only reason that you're going to see cuts here is because I was cutting out applause uh, just for the sake of time. So, mm -hmm. but you're, you're going to get his full message right here. President Trump, a dear friend, escaped death by mere inches. And my thoughts immediately turned to the book of Isaiah that says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Well, let me tell you the weapons that they used. First, they tried to ruin his reputation, and he's more popular now than ever. And then they tried to bankrupt him, and he's got more money now than he had before. <laughs> and then they tried to put him in prison, and he's freer and has made other people free with him. And then... And then last weekend, they tried to kill him. And there he is over there, alive and well. I love it so much. What a moment, man. I know, right? So that great. Fantastic. So, so great. And then there was West Virginia Governor Jim Justice, along with a very special guest. The baby doll's got a prediction for everybody here. And here's the prediction. <laughs> Baby dog says, we'll retain the house, the majority in the house. <laughs> oh my God, look at that dog. We're going to flip the United States Senate. <laughs> <laughs> and overwhelmingly, we're uh. going to elect Donald J. Trump and J.D. Vance in November. <laughs> Baby dog. My and you know, dog. because baby dog knows. Baby dog. I've, <laughs> that dog. <laughs> You're not a fan of actual bulldogs. You just love the, the Georgia bulldogs. Yes. But man, I love bulldogs and their wrinkles and their snoots. I, you just, know, I, I, th I would probably like them if they weren't so snorgly. Snorgly. Oh, I and love. And so snotty. unnecessary. I just, I, every time I see them, I get mad that they exist because they're so... <laughs> overbred and it's mean at this point to keep breeding them they need to not breed them anymore it's oh mean God. i love them so much you guys there's so, there's i want to get all up in their faces and just <laughs> I just, want, I just, I just I'm sad. I'm sad for that entire uh, breed of smashed face dogs. God, I just love them. It's you have somebody so has a bulldog named Daisy. Hope I love that. <laughs> so great. Uh, yeah, I mean, they can't breathe. They can't even give birth correctly. Like they're a mess, you know. They're I just a hot. They're a hot mess. But I, please, if you if you ever are I, around anybody that breeds them, tell them to stop. It's so mean. I love that. so mean. Anyway, baby dog had a good prediction. Baby dog I'm is just right. I'm with baby dog. I stand <laughs> with baby dog. <laughs> I love that that's her name. I just love it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Nikki Haley uh, also gave a speech. And so it's interesting, this first clip, because I am not a good lip reader. I have no idea what Trump is saying, but I feel like he might be saying she wanted to do this. Like, because when she first came out, she was like, President Trump asked me to speak tonight. And that's when they pan over to Trump and he is saying something that I just don't know. But to me, it kind of seemed like maybe he was saying she, she wanted, wanted to, to she this. wanted to do it. Like she asked yeah. me essentially. Yeah. I don't know if that's what he said. I have no idea. I'm completely speculating. You can see for yourself. Hello, Republicans. <laughs> President Trump. President Trump asked me to speak to this convention in the name of unity. He has to do it. He's a little irritated, I think. That's it the was thing. a gracious invitation, mm -hmm. and I was happy to accept. I'll start by making one thing perfectly clear. Donald Trump has my strong endorsement, period. We should acknowledge that there are some Americans who don't agree with Donald Trump 100% of the time. I happen to know some of them. And I want to speak to them tonight. 
message to them is simple. You don't have to agree with Trump 100% of the time to vote for him. Take it from me, I haven't always agreed with President Trump. But we agree more often than we disagree. We agree on keeping America strong. We agree on keeping America safe. And we agree that Democrats have moved so far to the left that they're putting our freedoms in danger. I'm here tonight because we have a country to save. And a unified Republican Party is essential for saving her. He's sitting down. Okay, that was whatever. I just was complete. I'm like him. I'm like, yeah, that's nice. Okay, move along now. <laughs> Listen, I think it's nice that she did it. That's lovely. But he better not put her anywhere in the cabinet. What do you think about what he was saying when she said President Trump asked me to? Speak I think tonight? I think he said just what you said. I think yeah. he's, I think he said she wanted to do it, and I think he's right. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that she probably wanted to do it, and then she got up on stage and he asked me. I just don't know if I, I just don't put her in the cabinet, man. Don't. I, I don't know don't. what's gonna happen. With I mean, it's I mean, nice. It's <sighs> nice that she did it. It's if that's fine, whatever. And I, you could tell he was just like, mm hmm, okay. I just, I was just shot in the head two days ago. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's Thanks. nice that you're here. Thanks, Thanks for coming. <laughs> you know?